Okay, finding my mic here. There we go. All right, today I'm looking to do a couple things on this stream. Um, set up Docker for one on Windows 10 here. Kind of going to be in new territory. Hadn't been in for a while. Haven't been haven't been playing with Windows 10 that much, even though I have a machine that runs it now. Um, so with that, I'm not going to fiddle around much. I'm just going to kind of clean this puppy up. I don't need this stuff on the desktop. I don't even really need Chrome. I don't need anything on the desktop. There we go. Empty that trash out. And let's see here. I will open up Chrome though. We'll start right off by going out and getting Docker. Let's see if we can we can do that. Docker for Windows. Docker for Windows. Let's type that actually. Windows. Whoops. Ten. Very specific because Docker hasn't traditionally always been available on Windows. Installed Docker Desktop for Windows. Docker is that is that what this is called? <laughs> Oh, download from Docker Hub. I think that's what I want to do, right? Windows containers, install Docker desktop for Windows desktop app. Docker for Windows. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's what I want. Cute, how cute. A little fun whale and containers on a boat. Please log in and download. All right, I'll do that. That is, oops, get Docker. Yeah, let's do our desktop stable. Oh, no, wait, what's the difference between this, Windows Docker for desktop, and this is, it's the same thing. Okay, just same thing, different, whatever. So let's start that when you're done downloading. What happened to it? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Bash for Ubuntu for Windows. Feature Windows. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I have Ubuntu, too. I have an Ubuntu machine. Um, but I need to do this on Windows 10. Standalone of Ubuntu, or, stand, or autonomous of Ubuntu. So I'll, I'll do it on Ubuntu later too. But right now, the goal is to get all this stuff set up on this to me. Yeah, sure. Let's use the Windows containers, whatever that means. Probably going to do something crazy. But yeah, so I wanted to get it set up, working through kind of also, um, as Jeff Carpenter mentioned, and the team I work with uh, often does, we do what are called friction logs. So we work through basically the user experience of going through setup on something, and we figure out where it's, where it's broken or it doesn't really make sense or something like that. We add that to our log and then go back to the team that is working on making it smooth and seamless and all that kind of jazz and make sure that they have the information. And sometimes, depending on, like, if it's open source or not, we'll, you know, we'll throw in a PR or two ourselves. There you go. Oh, look at the little fishy. All right. I guess that's going to take a second. So we just get to sit here and bear through an installer installing. Ah, there we go. Close, close and log out and log out of Windows to go. Oh, I guess I have to reboot. All right, well, I'm going to sign out and, and reboot, I guess. Well, 
What's up, friendly and geeks? There's our little Docker desktop. I guess we can. Docker desktop is starting. This will take only a few seconds. All right. I'll believe it after a few seconds. Then I'll believe a minute or two will be that. What? Um, hmm. I don't know the exact context of that question, but I can confidently say no. It is not the only language that enables you to do that in a program. I guess you're talking about like in an actual desktop application or a web application, or I'm thinking with C++, maybe a desktop application. Whatever the case, I mean, it, it's, it's a UI feature, framework feature, so it can, it can be anything that has a UI framework. Yeah, desktop. Yeah, it's use C Sharp, use JavaScript, use whatever. You can use Electron if you're using JavaScript, or you can use whatever the, the XAML thing is for Windows. Um, there's a lot of different features. It kind of just depends on what you need to do. So how, do you want to enable Hyper-V stuff? Sure, I guess so. Your computer will restart automatically. Uh, this is a lot more restarting and logging out than I'm used to when installing Docker. But then, of course, I'm usually not doing it on Windows, so this is a new experience. Windows has a lot more reboots and stuff. So is it doing... I'm going to give it about 20 seconds, and if it doesn't reboot, I'm going to reboot it. Happens if I open this while I'm waiting to reboot. Oh, there it goes. Restarting. Okay, don't turn off your computer. Oh boy. I always kind of get worried whenever I, <laughs> whenever I see Windows starting to do this blue screen of installation instead of the blue screen of death which it was so famous for it now has the blue screen of installation which i don't know sometimes it takes a few seconds sometimes it takes a long long time there we go and yes i am using virtualbox it's been doing a pretty good job since i uh got a hold of the guest editions uh pretty slick Capabilities are added. A lot of different um, display editions are added with VirtualBox guest editions. Originally, when you download it, you get basic 4x3 resolution setups, which is pretty weak when you're trying to get a bunch of stuff on the screen or like code or do something like what we're doing right now on a Twitch stream. Um, yeah, sure. More, th more than welcome for the heads up on that. Glad, glad to answer questions. Um, don't where to get the MP that would help me. Yeah, I don't, when it comes down to the specifics of where to get the floating panels, I don't know what package that is. I mean, I guess you could probably just Google floating panels. No, no JS flo no electron floating panels. That's what I would put in. That'd be my first guess. And I bet you you'd get something, something useful. At least a good starting point, you know, where... You can find other words to search for on that. Yeah, one of these days I'd like to actually build an Electron app too, even though I have, oh, it's restarted again. Come on, Windows, two restarts for Docker, huh? That's, that's pretty gargantuan effort there. Mm, mm-hmm. I'm actually pretty stoked about that because there's a core of technology that just, it needs to be there. It, 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 we don't need six different variants of it, of browser technology these days. Um, the whole industry has basically synchronized around 
HTML, CSS, JavaScript as front end language. You know, so there's for a while there, companies like Microsoft, for instance, were trying to push things like VB script on the client side and other things like that, or in the browser, I guess we could say. So there's a lot of competing interest around those things. But now, I mean, basically you're using Chrome, Firefox, or Safari, or even Edge, it, everything just works in it. 99% of everything just works in it. So there isn't a lot of reason to have 15 gazillion different browsers running around with completely different code bases. There's certain things that are going to give it a competitive advantage or not, but those aren't really the core rendering, unless you're going to make your core rendering a lot faster like Chrome did. And then it took over the whole market space there. Whoa. Stuff flickering around. It looked like my stream died for a second, but all right, here we go. We're getting back in finally. Docker desktop is starting. Yes, that's what I want. So we're almost there. Let's see, we're in already. How how long is this taking already? Geez, four, 14 minutes? 14 minutes in the stream and Docker is still installing itself. That's, it seems like this should be an easier process. It takes like two minutes on Ubuntu or Linux, whatever. It takes about the same amount of time to get the whole thing running on Mac OS. And I don't remember any reboots. That seems weird. Which leads me to wonder what is going on in the background. Like what's what's the deal there? Extra bits executing that I don't know about, that we don't know about. Here, the Docker desktop is starting still. Okay. Hey, look at there. An error occurred. That's just dandy. Unable to start. The running command stopped because the preference variable blah failed to start the virtual machine. Because one of the Hyper-V components is not running. Let's reset to defaults. Resetting this may take some time. Okay. This is this is an unfortunate start to this process. <laughs> Docker at Windows still questionable. I know, based on this experience just now, I would definitely say so. Um, Oh well, so I didn't I didn't pick that right. Docker, Docker and the Windows crew picked that, um, which I guess it's still attempting to reset and start. So we're waiting for it. Um, yeah. So Microsoft and Docker got together to build Docker on Windows or do whatever they did, and it requires Hyper-V. Ah, oh, shit. Sarah's so failed to start with machine Moby VM because something, something. So you're unable to start the running command because of error. Well, let's, let's open up Chrome and look this up. Error. Docker on Windows 10 because 
Hyper-V service not starting or something. What I said? Hyper-V components is not running. Let's look at a few of these. Hyper-V virtual management service must be running. Expected favor should start. Docker fails to start. Back instant. So what is 16? Where it's not running with the old version of Hyper-V, but after that, okay. Well, let's see here, let's, let's do Hyper-V, Hyper-V Manager. Let's take a look at that and see if, see if it's even running. Introduction, yeah, okay. And then this thing, is it running? It looks like it's running. VirtualBox does have an option to use Hyper-V now via the parallelization interface. All right, this is let me actually look at the chat window. I can't, I'm not looking at it right now. It's not use the same hypervisor as Docker. Right. Hyper-V. Not sure you can both at the same time. Well, yeah, okay, so that's a that's a valid Hyper-V now via the parallel para virtualization interface. So yes, it would do the trick. Yeah, the other problem is Uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to reboot it again and try. So it should work because it works on Ubuntu, but then, of course, that's VirtualBox nested in VirtualBox. Upload crash report. Uh, whatever. Do, 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 do. So I'm not really sure what the deal the deal is with Hyper-V. I don't even know why Windows actually, well, I guess the reason they forcefully used Hyper-V was because Microsoft bought Hyper-V and it's their thing. But I don't, I don't see any objective reason in actually using Hyper-V versus just going ahead and using whatever VirtualBox or something. I don't know why they didn't use the, that new bash on Windows thing the WSL or whatever they call it. That seems like something that they should have used. But then, then, of course, maybe that's just an offshoot of all this stuff in the first place. I don't know. Yeah, don't need Photoshop. Thanks, so. Do 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 do. Yes, please close OneDrive. We don't need you to run. There we go. Let's say no action. Kubernetes. Yeah. Restart. Kinematic. Well, let's do this. Ah. There we go. Reset to oh, 
starting, community an instance is already running, exiting. Oh, maybe that's maybe that crash is just fake news. That could be it. So let's close that and let's go in here. Oh no, it actually does go red. If I switch to Windows Container, you're about to switch to Windows Containers. Existing containers will continue to run, but you will not be able to manage them until you switch back to Linux Containers. No data will be lost otherwise. Do you want to continue? No, I don't. That just sounds like a bad idea. Switch, diagnose, feedback, check for updates. Yeah, I have the latest. Okay. Get out of the way, message. I'm trying to do stuff here. Docker Hub settings. Thanks for joining, by the way, Alex, Cedric, or Klunvin. I guess I could call you Klunvin since that's your your name on. Twitch, right? <laughs> Option to use higher here. So I'm curious, the digital gnome. You say VirtualBox has an option to use Hyper-V now via the para virtualization interface. Does that mean running Hyper-V in the VirtualBox? I'm not sure exactly what that, I'm a little confused by that. Uh, search the issues. Yeah, I want to do that too. Okay, so let's search, search the issues. Make Chrome my default browser. <sighs> Docker API no longer listening to TCP. Well, that's a problem. That's wow. That's a lot of issues. Still diagnosing. It's going to do a search again here. Windows 10. Docker for Windows Hyper-V not working. After Windows updated 10. Da, 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 da. Well, we just looked at that. Yeah, let's say. Windows 10 Hyper V component not starting Docker fails. Oh, yeah, that's failed to start Docker for Windows. So, one of the Hyper V components is not starting, not running at start. Blah. Okay. Unable to start. And then they say Hyper V. Can you create a Hyper-V VM? Well, let's go try to do that, actually. Oh, is that who I think it is? Oh, it sure is, Frism. And talk to him since platform as a service days with all that net, quick create. A Windows 10 dev environment or 1804 or MIS patch, what the world? Oh yeah, 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 I don't wanna do that. Let's just do a dev environment. Create virtual machine. Oh wow, gracious. 12 gigs of it. Come on, it should be going faster. 
Got a gigabit connection. That should take 12, 24, 30, uh, eight times 12, eight, I don't know, about 100 seconds. So anyway, we'll let that run for a minute. What's all this other stuff doing? Oh, that's all time. That's cool. Okay. So then. Can run Hyper V in a VM, right? Oh. Okay, I guess so. I haven't I haven't really done much to keep up with Windows hypervisor environments. We are seeing similar issues. No confirmed answer anywhere else. Perhaps get an value statement about Hyper V not being supported in virtual box. To enable nested virtualization. Ah, that may be my exact issue. Run the following PowerShell command from outside the Hyper-V host of the Hyper-V guest. Hyper-V host of the Hyper-V guest. Okay, so that would be here, right? From the very lower layer, in this case, Windows 10. Run which command? Oh, is this the command? So let's see your PowerShell. No, oh, oops, I bet. Let's make sure to do it right. PowerShell. Right click, run as administrator. Yes. Right, and then. Okay. Set command will execute the actual script, replace VM name with the proper VM name running in the Hyper-V host. Follow the prompts of the shell to enable Mac spoofing and other options that may come up as needed. I don't know what that VM name is. Why would I, why would I even know what that is? I have to go dig around for more weird information. Desktop. That doesn't seem like the actual desktop, I don't think, would be the VM, right? Oh, or is it, I bet it's Moby something, something. Let's go look at that, see what we got. There we go. Moby Linux VM. That's that's what that should be, right? Moby Linux VM. I misspelled the way they misspelled. That's genius, Adrian. Come on. And I did it twice. Linux. There we go. Can I be loaded because running scripts is disabled on this system? Oh, I need to do that thing. How do you enable script execution on Windows 10 PowerShell? Oh, Windows, come on. Change PowerShell script execution policy in Windows 10. So what is it? It's get that's your get execution policy. Restricted. 
Um, so we want to do to execution to remote sign for current user in settings. Oh, you can go click through. What happened to just executing the thing? Oh, I don't want to hack the registry. There's command. I just want the command. Change execution policy on Windows 10. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I'll bet the Microsoft Docs will be a thousand times better than that other thing. Yeah, set execution policy. Yeah, I just want this probably. Probably remote signed. Yes, to ball. Cool. And then I'm going to go back and actually run that again. <clears throat> and then let's see. Yeah, enable that thing. Woo! Blew up. Was Aim able to find a. Da -da -da -da. Oh, well. You may not be able to start the VM. Uh, get out of there for a minute. Actually, that probably is what I want to do. More details on the PowerShell script that enabled the new REST virtualization technology that is only built in Windows Server. Yeah, I know they don't support it. But it's the only way I'm going to get this bloody thing to run because Windows. Had the same issue. So this has been going on for a week and no feedback from doctors. Anybody been able to get this working at all? After starting Windows, it worked perfectly for me, at least for now. Should be CDD edit. It says hyper. Hypervisor launch auto. Oh yeah, what is it's your BC edit? Man, bring it back all the old stuff. Does it run? BC edit. Oh, B BCD edit. Yeah, boom. Oh, come back here. Where'd you go? It looks almost done. I'm gonna run this and then say yes. Yes. Okay, clear. I don't know what it did with BCD edit. Come back here, BCD edit. As soon as this downloads, I'm going to reboot and give that a try again. Because it seems like, it really seems like this should work, honestly. I mean, it works on Ubuntu. I run nested VMs of stuff all the time with Docker. Or nested, not particularly VMs. Well, I guess it's not running a nested VM, is it? If I'm running Docker in an Ubuntu virtual machine or a Debian virtual machine, it's just running the Docker service. In Windows, it has to run a whole thing a whole virtual machine, I guess, or some type of a state of a virtual machine to get this to work since Windows can't actually run Docker itself. 
interesting. So we're trying to we're trying to sort of pseudo hack this though. I'm honestly surprised this download takes so long. Usually Windows downloads in Seattle on a gigabit connection go directly to their CDN for the city, which is crazy fast. So it's kind of weird that this dev environment VM is uh, not so quick. But it, it would be interesting to see if it actually manages to start this, even though the Docker one died on itself. Verifying image. Yeah, Alex, that is the truth. Diagnostics was ridiculously useless. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what the point of that was. I guess if you are trying to actually log an error, but considering that seems to be a thing for testing, why even put it so easily accessible like it's going to do something useful for an end user? Jeez, I guess this is going to take forever too. I am, I am really not. This is not increasing my interest in running thing on things on Windows. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tweet about that. Can one run a VM? in hyper v in a vm on windows 10 of windows 10 to run docker in a windows 10 vm i've run into it not starting and, and a bunch of disparate docs There, someone's someone's probably gonna scream at me. Oh, you should have memorized how to do that ten years ago. <clears throat> this evening, I'll actually be diving into another session too that I was gonna do yesterday, but I ran into some completely unrelated technical issues. I had to solve those, so I worked them out yesterday. And this evening, I'm gonna actually work through Docker installation and setup of Apache Cassandra and local installation of Apache Cassandra and talk about other installation options for Apache Cassandra and also Datastax Enterprise. That'll be a pretty cool session because and it, it, it's gonna be a cool session. It's probably gonna be a multi-part session because it's definitely not as simple as, oh yeah, just install this on your machine and do all the things. It it takes thought and you have to decide what you want to do. But this evening I intend to set up, show how to set up a development environment and get Apache Cassandra and Datastax Enterprise running in various configurations. And I'm gonna do it via an Ubuntu slash Debian virtual machine, just like this. And it's not gonna have all these crazy problems. I've done it before. I don't. Windows is not a super ideal uh, development environment for Go. It's not a super good environment to do container development. Um, I'm sure some people, it always seems to be someone that has managed to figure it out and be super badass at it and somehow make it work. But the, as one can see, this is, this is too much nonsense. Like, so I just pulled that image and now it's going to extract it from the archive. So I'm just going to let it do that. But let's see here. Okay. I'm just going to close down. Or actually, I'm going to I'm going to leave that VM running. I'm going to actually start up an Ubuntu VM. 
And as I do this, I want to I want to note verbally a few things. One, that Windows VM that's running right now has 16 gigs of memory. It also has dedicated uh, video memory, and it has six cores on this processor. The uh, Linux image that I'm going to start has eight gigs of memory and is only using a mere two cores on this machine. So dramatically less power, literally half, less than half even, if you just look at the cores. And I bet you I can get all of this stuff running on the Ubuntu image without this type of cruft. Might have to bump up the cores to make it a little bit more usable in the long run, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna start with this. It's booting up right now. Um, while that's running, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch it over so you can see the booting Ubuntu one. Oh, interesting. There it goes. I said interesting because uh, even though the Windows one is clearly running, OBS doesn't show me the option to pick it anymore. I don't know what that means exactly. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it died and it's just not informing me of that yet. No, no, it's definitely, it's definitely still there. But anyway, yeah, it's still back here. It says it's extracting the image. It's at sixteen percent now. Oops, what was that? Well, Windows wasn't designed for development to protect it. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, it kind of wasn't, was it? I mean, I've done a, it's it's a great platform. I kind of give Windows crap all the time, but honestly, Windows is a, is a really, really good platform for building corporate CRUD apps. It's an exceptional platform for that. Like crazy good. And it's not even that bad for doing certain types of web development <clears throat> or CLI apps for Windows or desktop apps, you know, the CRUD app situation, right? Any any type of consumer or even corporate application that needs to run on Windows, Windows is a great platform for that. Throw Visual Studio on it, write C Sharp all day, it's beautiful. Like you don't have to mess with anything else contained dev environment, et cetera, et cetera. But the minute you want to do anything hardcore, like do distributed databases, distributed systems, you want to manage whatever, it it becomes almost impossible. So why is this such a lousy, oh. There we go, okay, yes, and then adjust window size. There we go, all right. This is ridiculous, but I'm going to install guest editions. Yes, run it, please. Also, let's see if we can. Oh, cursor is not showing up. There we go. So you run the editions. And then I'm going to go down here and try there we go. devices, resolution, there, that's what I want. Apply. Yes, keep the settings. Please work right. Don't be crazy. Yeah, beautiful. Well, actually, I have no idea. What the heck resolution is that? I thought I picked this one. I don't know what 1680-1030 is. That's the weirdest resolution I've ever seen in my life. 1610 my foot. Go to that one. Okay. 
Oh, I see what it's, it's flaking out a little bit. That's fine. I'm gonna wait for this to finish, and then we'll reboot this, and that'll give us the good. Uh, oops, shut down, restart now. This will actually give us <clears throat> all sorts of nice resolution options for Ubuntu in the VM, if I can type my password. There we go. Go, 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 go. Uh, I just looked at <laughs> I looked at my metrics on system performance, and uh, Electron is fighting to try to use more memory than um, <laughs> the VMs. The, the VMs actually need the memory. I feel like if you put Electron, like Slack or whatever Electron app you're using, into a VM and just limited it to like one gig of memory or even like 256 megabytes of memory or something, it would just use up that amount and still just kind of work. It's weird that it just eats up so much memory. Unattended upgrade in progress during shutdown. Please don't turn off the computer. So this will probably take forever too. Might have to, might have to eat some food. Oh, I started. Started Spotify. And then Brain Food, Deep Focus. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's oh, this. There we go. <laughs> progress uh the windows machine by the way is like i don't know it's at 20 26 percent now it seriously just cracks me up yeah while while that boots There you go. That's that's basically the situation over in Windows land. 41% extracting that disk. And all I want to do is have the disk extracted, and then I'm going to reboot. And hopefully, Docker will work. Um, so far, though, that's not what's happening, as everybody's noticed. Uh, let's see here. Back to the OS that works. I was getting worried for a second. All right, so I don't need that anymore. Un undock yourself. Eject. <laughs> Always. Oh yeah, uh, install docker 18.04 Ubuntu. Now here's here's kind of the cool thing, right? Oh, this, I love this blog entry. I just need to bookmark it in my brain or something. I use it all the time to snag the commands and stuff for installing docker. But this, this virtual machine, like I was saying, is running. I'm using up a total for the virtual machines, 24 gigs of memory 
both have dedicated video space. Both have all together six, eight cores dedicated on my 12 cores or 12 uh, compute unit thing, whatever they're called. Um, I have 12 on this machine. And we're still making progress here. I would almost bet <laughs> that this will work better even with those resource situations bogging down everything than Windows by itself. So let's see. Let me do that. 1804 installing Docker. Upgraded use upgradable receiver. I don't actually care about upgrading them. Yeah, that's cool. So then let's get our certs. Oh, and this thing, chill out with the updates. Remind me later. There we go. It's a good tune. Add the key. Oh, we'll probably have to install curl. I really need a green screen. This wall is boring. Oh. So add get update. No oh, wait, sir. Install curl. There we go. Add Docker repository out sources. That is what I want. You are about to install a Docker right now instead of the default Ubuntu repo. I don't see why Docker can't keep up the Ubuntu repo or the Debian repo or whatever. Uh, it looks, looks glorious. What's it supposed to say? Ubuntu Bionic. Docker, Docker, Docker. Everything says Docker. So that looks like what they want me to do. So then... Yes, please. Oh, and just, just to point it out, while that's running, um... Windows is back there, you know, doing this still. Haha. Ha. Oh, just super frustrating. Um, and then we do pseudo status. Do we even really need to do that? We just go run Docker PS. Uh, but we'll need to set up this stuff. Yeah, yeah.
the responses to my tweet about that is hilarious. The nested VM doesn't start. I've now loaded an Ubuntu VM with half the resources to have a race between machines. It's not really fair at all. <laughs> All right, I had to go look at the tweets because, you know, cool, that looks wonderful. So then we need to sudo user mod ag docker dollar user, there we go, and switch user to the thing. Boom. And then that group, you're not logged in, declare the username. So I think I, I think I, that covers all the bases. Um, Docker PS. Yeah, so. <laughs> this this cracks me up. So we just installed Docker, got it running, set the user group, set the user, everything, no reboot, right? Like, why would it even take a reboot on, on Linux? Um, but yeah, so anyway, back to the original purpose here. My noon. And we're going to get killer video going here. So let me go and note this. Where are we at? We're at minute, one hour, one minute. And I'm actually able to get into the original purpose of this stream, which is to get killer video running. So I'm going to deal with the Windows Docker virtual machine issues later, because that's just no fun. Killer video, which most of my audience right now, I believe, is very, very familiar with. Uh, yep, got it. Um, okay. So Killer Video is a reference application that we use at Datastax among the developer advocate team for all sorts of examples and stuff. And I'm going to start doing some actual project work against it. Um, some general stuff, but some other stuff too. I think we're going to take some samples and pull out like individual little examples too. It's, it's going to be pretty cool. So this is a killer video app. Here's the cat. That's what I would like to use for uh, posting on the internet. I always put the cat picture somewhere. Uh, oh God. Talk about getting distracted. Have you ever watched videos of cats freaked out by cucumbers? It's a thing. It's amazing. Watch it. For some reason, cats just freak out about cucumbers. That Windows machine still isn't done, by the way. 
just uncompressing the whatever thing. Um, all right, so we want to open up the GitHub. And I think I actually want to start. I'm going to go from the docs. Yeah, here we go. So this is the best, well, at least in my opinion, if you're just getting started with this, this is the best place to kind of get started. You got your link to GitHub repos if you want to go check those out. Um, and let's see here. Yeah, so I can just I can just dive in from here, really. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get started. Get started. Blah. So we got Docker installed on not Windows or Mac. So that's something we should probably add a section here for uh, Linux. Which let's see here. What's the note taking app? And oh yeah, get it. Actually, do I have code on here? I don't think I haven't installed code. Let's go get ourselves an editor to use. We're going to use Visual Studio Code for this. I think I can. Oh, yeah, I do, I do want to do it this way. So it's best to go out to the site for Visual Studio Code. Um, and don't use don't use that application management platform thing. There we go. All right, I had to fix the music volume for a second. My volume is slightly different than yours. Like I'm actually just talking and I can barely hear myself because I've got it cranked. It's kind of how I roll, but that's okay. So I'm just going to open the deb in place. Uh, let's see, get that out of there. That'll come up in a second with the, the dependency, the Debian thing there. So now it's, it's okay to use this because it's actually going to know, it's going to have the appropriate mappings back to where the file is, the repository pertinent to the file, all that kind of jazz. Like when you do it that way, it's pretty slick. And I, I really like the way the team at Visual Studio Code has set that up for Linux. It's pretty good. I also like the way Visual Studio Code is set up on Windows and Mac. It's They've, they've done a stellar job. Um, my preference whenever I get deeper into code is still always to go, I jump into a JetBrains product. IntelliJ, WebStorm, Rider, one of those. Because it just tends to actually know the code better. Uh, Visual Studio Code kind of leaves a little bit to be desired there. Let's see, what are we, we're going to go with Node.js this time. Actually, I think, well, I'm going to do C Sharp too, but we'll do that one later. Work on Node.js for right now. Implementation ideas. Let's see here. Add details around a Linux deployment and dev setup option for killer video. So, so getting started, what is, what repo is that? You wouldn't want to try on one set. It's pretty stale now. All in one? Well, where was that even on the docs, actually? Oh, by the way, let's let's take a look back over here in La La Land with uh, Windows craziness. So this is what it says. Windows 10 dev, dev environment is turned off, so start it. 
Um, Change the state of Windows 10 dev environment. It's failed to start because the Hyper-V component is not running. Okay, so clearly there's some issues there. Yeah, we'll come back to that later. Whatever. Not going to mess with it. Not worth the time right now. So let's get back into Ubuntu land where things are working. Um... I thought it would be useful to set it up in Windows, but since that's not even really going to work in a repeatable environment, I don't want to mess with it right now. So back to Ubuntu. Um, in Ubuntu land, let's hear. Oh yeah, you'd mentioned Alex. Okay, the all-in-one. Do do to the machine. So here. Oh, I'm off on npm. Install Docker, choose your programming lane, change Docker, Docker for Windows, Mac, Docker from there. Yeah, so from this page, actually, where do we have a link for that? We might need to add that, actually. Yeah, where's where's the link to the actual all-in-one? Can you send the link? Yeah. We have a link to all yeah. I'm only moving it. Wait a second. Oh. Oh, is it the thing you've been working on? That's cool. I'd be stoked to try that out. So what did I do? I just broke something again. Oh, there we go. Let's do documents. Uh, read. Ah, I hate how Ubuntu has this file manager set up read me dot md there we go oh cute it does it does color highlighting and stuff yeah send me send me a whisper of it it should it should let you do that i think oh i'll go look in slack hold on let me open it up Oh yeah, that's why I don't know where that's at. You're all in one one. Oh, this would be good. I can test your stuff on. Oh, that's the. Oh, I don't have Kubernetes running yet, anywhere, at the moment. Maybe I should stick to. The. Uh, original there. Gotcha. Oh, no. That YAML's going to run for local containers? Well, now I've lost my Ubuntu. There it is. Oh, I can just use the Docker Compose? Is that what you're saying? Okay, that'd be pretty slick. I'll give that a quick try. What the heck? Um, do I have Docker Compose on the Ubuntu setup by default? That is a question.
All right, we're going to try this. And then probably go the other route too. Just to just to step through it all. Uh, right now, the Ubuntu machine only has eight gigs of memory, um, which isn't a tremendously massive deal, but I'm going to bump it up to 16 gigs in a minute. Um, do a few quick things here. Oh, it is almost lunchtime, though. So anyway, code's installed. We got code installed. Oh, eight gigs is still fine for this? Cool. Uh, I got uh, four CPU cores, I think, something like that. I can bounce those up too if I need to. Let's see, we're gonna, we're gonna bookmark your thing here and put it on the toolbar menu. There we go. I don't really care about the most visited. Cool. Now I need to. Oh, where's my, where's my off device? Uno momento. No, I don't know where my two-factor off device is. Anyway, we're gonna grab a few more pieces. Then I'm gonna grab lunch, and uh, I'll set up two-factor auth on here so I can log in. I guess, yeah, I want to do that. So clear, docker, compose. We should have that now, right? Yeah, okay. Mm, let's go in, actually, let's here, make dir codes. Yeah, what time is it over there? It's like, is it almost midnight or something? 11, 11 o'clock at night? Or 20, 2300? Oh, I bet I don't have, oh, I do. Okay, I'm glad I have Git, should have Git. Yeah, okay, 2015, yeah. I was close, so close. Um, Docker Compose. Do I need to change the permissions of the file to run it? Docker Compose. Actually, I don't, I don't know how to use Docker Compose. How do you use, how do you pass a thing to it? I've completely forgotten what the switch is. Docker Compose file. Oh yeah, that's what you do. Come back to your terminal. Docker compose up dash D. What? Oh. <clears throat> I don't know how I got it. Why I put the slash on it. There we go. Ah, oh, see, now that's, that's gigabit right there. It's just sucking those images down super quick. Yeah, I know what the answer is to that. So I actually leave the delay on 
even though it kind of makes chatting a little weird sometimes. Uh, because the simple fact of the matter is, if I cut it down, then the quality of the stream might degrade. It shouldn't, but it might. And then things get blurry, like the code, which for a coding stream, really, it's just kind of sucky. So I leave it so that it focuses on the video stream, and that means it lags it a bit so that it can do catch up during the streaming process. But otherwise, you can kind of turn that off, and then you're more in sync with the chats, which I've been thinking about doing, but... Oh, there's the other. It's getting it done. I feel like I should have live tweeted this at the same time. All right, on that note, I am actually going to let this finish. And let's see, how do you do a raid? I'm going to raid somebody. Raid. Um, who is on right now? I don't even know. All three of us are going to raid somebody. Oh, yeah, I want to do that. I wanted to. I guess we could we could raid Bob Ross. He's doing art right now, but. <laughs> um, what the? Come on. Oh, Clarkio. Maybe we'll do Clarkio. None of the above. Why? I don't know how to do that. Is that what you do? Oh, that's it. Sweet. And then I will be back later. So.